the end of 93, on a cold and wintry night, the 17th of November, if you want to be precise, Windsor Park was the venue in Loyalist East Belfast. The Republic and the Northern Six made up the intriguing cast. It was a night when every man, woman, child and mongrel dog, from inner city ghettos to the crowds down in the bog, stopped doing whatever it is they do because their nerves had toured the jelly to sit and watch events unfold upon the nearest telly. Very few had up, you see, because that's what they advised. The dangers in travelling up there could never be disguised. And when you think that Irish fans had travelled round the globe, yet the one place they weren't welcome was only up the road. But before I begin to reminisce upon that fateful night, let's not forget that at that stage we should have been out of sight. So let me take you back another five weeks yet again, when they called it a formality. Ireland versus Spain. <laughs> that afternoon in October the country just stood still and we knew that we would easily win but we'd settle for a 1-0 so we arrived at the ground excited we were a lively happy crowd the band struck up the anthem and we sang it out so loud I looked at the banners around the ground from our witty football sages like one said adios amigos Viva to Las Vegas. <laughs> so we settled down to watch this game as easy as ABC. Instead, we were struck by a sickness called the Spanish 1 2 3. <laughs> See, it gets you in the stomach in the space of half an hour and you start to feel quite nauseous and your legs start losing power and your vision of America begins to fade away. And all you can see in front of you is a weak in British bag. <laughs> So now we had a five week wait for the game in Windsor Park. In bed at night I tossed and turned and I wandered in the dark. I had visions of these orange men on the pitch before the match, parading on the touchline to the tune of, give it a sash. <laughs> and I dreamt I was negotiating with the IFA. And I listed all the things that I would gladly give away. Now, the OFA, I don't mean the farmer's crowd. Oh, Jesus, don't get me wrong. So you couldn't bargain with that lot now, you'd never stand the pawn. So, the OFA are the football powers that be in the Northern Association, and it's with them I dreamt that I was doing all this intense negotiating. Now, I'd let Ian Paisley become the Pope. And I'd live with all the dangers. I'd wear the sash, I'd beat the drum, I'd even show for rangers. <laughs> I'd kiss a portrait of the Queen. I'd even start a rumour that pasty faced James Molyneux has a sense of humour. <laughs> I'd give up articles two and three. I'd change my name to Billy. I'd buy a tin of orange paint and slap it on me, Willie! <laughs> All these things I'd gladly do, I'd gladly give and more. If only they would let us have a slightly better score. <laughs> but then I'd wake up in a sweat and find it was all a dream. But you'd never get a favour from that northern football team. <laughs> so all eyes turned to Belfast and our date with destiny. This was a night for a man to be mad. So where did that leave me? <laughs> you see, if we lost, that was it. Good night and thanks for calling. And if we won, well, that, of course, would only be gahaling. Okay, a draw might do us, but we wouldn't know until the score came through from Denmark, Spain, that was going on in Seville. So you could cut the tension with a knife as the teams walked on the pitch. If you could bottle and sell the hatred there, you'd soon be stinking rich. The first half came and went so fast. It all seems so unreal. No goals yet in Belfast. No goals in Seville. Then, 15 minutes into the second half, it flashed across the screen. Spain had scored! It took a second. What the fuck's that man? <laughs> slowly dawned on us it could mean the USA and it was like a mass conversion as we all began to pray <laughs> there was movement on the touchline word passed around the pub our jack is taken out <coughs> he's bringing on a soap hey, who's he bringing on instead we haven't got a clue oh I think it's Alan McLaughlin Alan? Alan who? <laughs> now Alan's been sub for such a long while He's been sitting so long, he's bound to have piles. <laughs> Poor old Alan. Now, being on the bench, well, it can't be much fun. So I think that it's time that we gave him a run. And Big Jack wandered over to Alan's side, and he said, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll take all the blame. I'm going to take my help off and giving you a game. You have 20 minutes left to become the hero, Alan. Alan! Who the fuck is Alan? 20 minutes left for this country to advance. 
So won't you go me book all? Take your bloody chance. You have 20 minutes left to become a hero, Alan. Alan! Who the fuck is Alan? Please forgive that outburst, my mind just went astray. <laughs> All was shagging happens when I think about that day. <laughs> so on came Alan McLaughlin to help get the goal we were needing. But within three minutes of him coming on, the shagging north were leading. <laughs> a brilliant goal by Jimmy Quinn. It went in like a comet. The northern fans went crazy. All we could do was vomit. <laughs> one team in iron. There's only a one team in iron. <laughs> One team in Aaron, the Lord support us crowd. Just like we had taunted them before in Lansdale Road. And when we taunted them before, did we think that they'd forget? Sure, King Billy won in 1691, they hadn't forgotten yet. <laughs> and guess what came back to haunt me as the minutes ticked away? The month of June, piss and rain, I was back in British Bay. <laughs> We braced ourselves for misery. Our World Cup on the rocks. When the ref gave us a free kick inside the northern box, everyone's floated free was cleared, but not so very far. And it landed in the uh, vicinity of our latest superstar. <laughs> My memory is of slow motion as he took it on his chest. He let it drop, drew back his leg and... We think you know the rest. <laughs> the northern fans went silent. So eerie you'd take fright. But we were a hundred miles away and we couldn't give a <laughs> shit! <laughs> one all! One all was how it ended and the TV toured to Spain. Well, let's watch the Spanish celebrating, what? Oh, Jesus, they're still playing! <laughs> they played three minutes injury time, that's someone's bleeding loyal. What's a starry referee of someone out there dying? <laughs> you have to blow the whistle, ref. Spain have to stay ahead. And we began to pray again. And this is what I said. Oh God, I promise I'll be very good. I'll behave with much more prudence. I'll take all my holidays in Benidorm. I'll be nice to Spanish students. I'll never ever sin again. I'll never be ungracious. I'll buy every shagging record made by Julio in the races. Make him blow the whistle, God. Make him blow it, please. Put me out of my misery. Put me out of my ears. <laughs> and after what seemed a lifetime, he gave the final blow. And I joined with a choir called Ireland to the strains of Here We Go. <laughs> and Dublin Airport later on that night, with every car horn blaring, made Rush Hour in Manhattan look like a slow day in Dal Air. <laughs> And now, as we travel onwards, no matter what we do, we'll never ever say again. Alan? Alan, Alan you?